So about a month ago, I made a video on the RD6006 power supply uh, control head. And after I made that video, I had a company send me an email and say, hey, uh, if you think that power supply is cool, come check out ours. So I said, okay, send it on over. So this is a company called Junts, who has a line of Juntech uh, instruments and controls and waveform generators and power supplies. And they sent this over uh, for me to check out. I'm gonna get this thing wired up. Now, like the RD6006, uh, it needs a power supply. It needs DC coming into it. So this is just the regulation circuitry. This is just a step-down buck circuit. So you'll still need to feed it DC from a power supply source. Um, but the, uh, the thing that makes this one special is the controls are completely wireless, remote controlled. So the uh, the deal is with this one is the, the part that does the work, you can mount this under your desk or out of the way or wherever you want. So this is the only thing taking up desk space. Now the model they sent over is uh, up to 60 volts at 24 amps. So this thing is no joke. I mean, most lab supplies are around five amp. I'm gonna go ahead and just hook up an old fashioned incandescent light bulb to the output of this thing. Cat, you gotta, you gotta knock it off. And I'm gonna see if I can figure this out without reading the directions too much. All right. So the display is kind of similar to that RD6006 in the layout of the voltage and the amps and the wattage. So I'm going to set it for 10 volts. That looks good. And current set to 24. I could leave it there, but uh, there, we'll just do four amps. And I believe if I hit OK, that will turn it on. Yeah, light bulb's on. And there we go. Um, oh, well, it's got a cool little... Uh, run symbol when the output is on. And uh, cat, you're gonna have to uh, settle down here. Um, let me get the cat out of the way. All right, I'm gonna switch out that incandescent bulb for an LED. Checking my polarity here, it looks like this is the negative side. So yeah, as I was saying earlier, this is a buck style, so basically a switching style power supply. There is gonna be some noise. They claim it's 50 millivolts peak to peak. I don't know if we can believe that or not. We'll, we'll wait for those drones to get his hands on one maybe but uh i know some people are gonna uh, complain about uh noise which can be an issue um now for someone like me i'm just a repair technician um i haven't run into a situation where i wasn't able to repair something because of a noisy power supply now for engineers i can definitely see you need the best of the best uh, but for someone like me I'm trying to set this to a reasonable 10, nope, 10 milliamps for that LED. I'm gonna leave it at 10 volts. We're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna hit okay. Yeah, there it is. It is on without blowing up the LED. So that is nice. Do that again here. Okay, what was I saying? So yeah, about the noise. Uh, for someone like me who's just repaired tech, uh, switching noise has never stopped me from doing something where I could see if you're an engineer, yeah, sure, maybe you should buy more expensive equipment. These start at, now looking at their AliExpress store, they have like seven different models of this that all talk to the same box. The cool thing with this is you can have, I believe, up to 30 boxes. This one control can control 30 of these. So you can you can set your own, you know, each, each box to its own voltage. Um, so I'll play with that a little bit later. Oh, right, I was talking about price. Uh, on their AliExpress store, you can buy, like I was saying, there's about seven different models. I think it's on the page here. And I think there's a five amp. Yeah, they start at, they start at five amps and they start at about $35, I think is what I saw. If you want to buy, yeah, $35 for the five amp version of the box if you wanna buy just the box to work with your existing control or you can get the, the package of a box with the control starting at what, $51 or something like that. So that's pretty reasonable. But again, remember this is not a full power supply. This is not, you know, line AC voltage input. Uh, you'll need like a, one of those caged industrial power supplies would be recommended to run this and, 
And uh, again, this handles up to 24 amps, which is, that is pretty good. Um, I'm going to take this thing apart, see what the guts are made of. Before I take it apart, they also sent one more box over. And inside of this is a part number that's not listed on their website right now, and I can't really find it. It's not in their catalog either. This box here is also 60 volts at, was it 50 amps? Yes, 50 amps at 60 volts this can control. Uh, so I guess if you want to stick weld, you can do that. Uh, it's just, it's insane. Even these connectors are huge. I just, a bench supply that can handle up to 50 amps is kind of insane, but they have it if you want it. Now, like I was saying earlier, the same control head can control both. So I'm going to set that up right now. Okay, so I have the 24 amp module set up on channel one, 50 amp module set up on number two. And to get to the settings, here, this number five, this is the, the menu. So to get to the channels, it's the fifth menu in the list. So I set uh, on five, I click OK. Now this is the channel. So I'm going to control channel one. OK again. So now I can set the voltage. Uh, let's put, set this at 3.3. Uh, .3. OK, so I think if I click OK, it'll turn on. Yeah, so there it is. 3.3, it's reading a little on the low side, 3.3 in the module. Now I'm going to leave that power rail on, and then I'm going to switch over to channel 2. And now I'm controlling channel 2. Uh, so let's change the voltage on that to, uh, where, what, would, what should we do, 10 volts? All right, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I should be able to click OK. There's 10. And we're on. And I can turn it off and on. Leave it run. I can even turn this all the way off and it stays in the last set position. I'm going to switch over to current. And uh, we've got this set for channel one at one amp. So I'm going to click OK. It should run. There it goes. 0 0.97, 0 0.98. Yeah, I guess that's pretty pretty close to one. This meter's old. I don't know if I trust that either. Now let's do the same to channel two. So I'm going to set and uh, go to channel two, enter, and if I enter again, it should run it at one amp. Okay, and there it is. Oops, I just hit max. Anyways, 0.987, pretty close to one amp. I'm going to start by taking apart the 24 amp model. A black printed circuit board. <laughs> you can definitely tell where the high current traces are. They've uh, added solder. Oh, maybe this just pulls right out here. Never had one of these apart yet, so I'm not sure what I'm in for. Okay, so I see the uh, communication wireless board is the only antenna right there a the little adder module what does this say isolated rs485 module yeah this does have uh some sort of communication stuff going to pc too which i have not looked into the software yet but this can talk to a pc um checking out the uh okay so here's the main mosfet right here it's part number i irf P4110, so maybe I'll look that up later. And here we have a set of diodes. And the caps are, what is that, the Chong, Chong, Chondinex? Chong, uh, typical, yeah, what you'd expect for a, a lower priced power supply. Those are uh, probably similar to the ones that are in my Unit T uh, power supply too, which 
getting on about five years now and still chugging along. Alright, so anyways, we have our fan blowing on the heatsink, which is just for one main switching transistor and a pair of diodes. And of course, here's the inductor that works together with the, uh, the switching transistor to make its voltage. Now it's the 50 amps beast turn to come apart. Well, come on. What is the trick to getting... Oh, I gotta disconnect that connector. I think this just pulls off. Bear with me while I fumble. Yeah, there we go. It's just one of those plug-in deals. Now this should just slide out. Okay. Disconnect it from here. There's a fan connector right there. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Four MOSFETs, I think. Are these all? Nope, that's a diode. Okay, oh, okay, so we have a MOSFET, diode, MOSFET, diode. A little bit bigger packages on the diodes on, uh, on this model. So let's see how they're just working in parallel, it looks like. Ooh, two inductors on this one. Yeah. There's a the communication board. Like here's just a jumper socket. My, maybe that's where uh, the option is uh, for the, the uh, PC communication. Yeah. Black printed circuit board again. That's kind of cool. Yeah, just more more bigger version of the same thing. There's the fan and the uh, display button board. The IRFP4110 MOSFET is good for 120 amps each, and there's two of them, so I believe they're being truthful with the 50 amp rating. It looks like we can control it independently right here from the module itself uh, without needing Okay, so I'm going to see if I can turn on a light bulb without the, without the face. Yeah, so you can. So I guess you could buy just the module to start off with without even needing this and still use it. So that's kind of cool. Here is the charge cable that came with the head unit. It's just USB on one side, barrel connector on the other. To charge a lithium battery, that is. In the box here. There we got a charge light that's on, and it also has an icon right in the corner there. If you can see it through the glare. All right. Yeah, you get the little lightning bolt next to the battery symbol there when it's charging. So, anyways, this has a lot of features similar to the RD6006 as far as uh, memory presets. Um, oops. You can change the settings of the display for quick response, automatic output, whether it turns on or off when you first power it up. You can set limits depending on your power that you're feeding it with. Uh, brightness control, some automatic shutdown stuff. You can do English or Chinese. Um, the thing that makes this different is, so it has one to 99 addresses. It's a little bit of English here, but it says uh, the addresses, uh, Different addresses represent different host power supplies. One to many control displays is possible. So I, I don't know if that means one control or two controls can control one box maybe, 
but then it has the, the 30 channels, which I believe just means one, one face can control up to 30 different uh, modules for 30 different voltages. And the wireless range is listed up to 10 meters. Thanks for coming along with me with my first hands-on impression of this power supply. This uh, power supply market is definitely getting interesting. Well, technically it's just a power supply controller. You'll still need a power supply to run it. But uh, if you're looking for something that doesn't take up much bench space, again, you can mount this anywhere under your desk or wherever. Uh, maybe this is for you. <laughs> if you need insane amount of current, yeah, this is a good option too. Um, I'm sure I missed something if this uh, power supply shows any interest or if uh, if you have questions or if I miss something important, I might make a second video. So let me know uh, if there's anything I missed or if you're curious about. Thanks for watching.